Dr. Shelby Harris, and this is Awake at the Wheel. Today, we're going to talk about sleep hygiene, why getting restful sleep before you get behind the wheel is so important. Last time, we learned about the dangers of drowsy driving. Nobody wants to wake up in the hospital, or worse, die as a result of driving while drowsy. So how do we prevent drowsiness in the first place? Seems simple enough, get better sleep, right? Well, not so simple, as everyone has different needs and different reasons for being drowsy. The majority of us need between seven to nine hours of sleep per night, and that's restful sleep. If you have interrupted or low quality sleep, you're going to feel drowsy during the day. So how can you determine the amount of sleep you need as an individual? The best way to do that is when you're on vacation. So step one is the vacation, and if you say you can't take one, you probably need one. Go to bed at your usual time, but don't set an alarm. Do this for five to six nights. By the fourth night, you'll start to see your natural sleep needs since you'll have gotten rid of any sleep deprivation you were carrying into vacation. If you tend to suffer from sleepiness on a daily basis, you want to first rule out sleep apnea or another physiological reason for your lack of restful sleep. A trip to your doctor will help to rule out or address these factors. Also, it's important to note that teens need more sleep than adults, so that late night cramming is particularly unhealthy for them, especially if they're going to drive. For many of us, getting restful sleep is simply about discipline and practicing good sleep hygiene. Once you've had your sleep need established, try to offer your body what it needs as closely as possible. If you have to get up earlier than you did on your vacation, make sure you go to bed earlier and be disciplined. The body has a regular schedule of wakefulness and sleepiness called the circadian rhythm. This means our body is designed to sleep between midnight and 6 a.m. and even for taking a nap between 2 and 4 in the afternoon. Great. Now I can tell my boss that I have a medical need for my siesta, I mean power nap. Here are some other steps you can take to get better sleep. Try to go to sleep and get up at the same time every day. Limit your use of electronic devices after dinner time and never put your TV or ideally any electronic gadgets in the bedroom. Anything that emits blue light should be minimized in the hours before bed. Mom? You'll thank me in the morning. The reason for that is blue light inhibits the production of melatonin in your brain. Melatonin helps you fall asleep and stay asleep throughout the night. By removing the influence of electronics before sleep, your brain and body is more relaxed and ready to settle into bed. Try not to consume spicy food, alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, or other stimulants before bed. Chamomile tea or milk is okay, but really try to avoid drinking liquids an hour before bedtime to limit chances of waking up in the first few hours during the deepest part of your sleep cycle. Overall, exercise is helpful, but not within three hours of bedtime. Try to time 20 to 30 minutes of light exercise about four to six hours before bed or in the morning. Next time, we'll talk about the various ways to prevent driving while drowsy. Thanks for watching, now get some sleep.